are we focusing? Okay. Um, hello. <laughs> I'm going to check stats just to see. This is my first time streaming anything, really. Um, hello, my name is Arden Shibley uh, with Yellow House Aerial. Um, we're doing a bit of a different format today. Instead of a full-on video, I decided we have an Inspire 2 to repair. Uh, so we're going to put a new piece of landing gear on it and chat about a couple things. So, welcome. Usually videos are a bit of a faster pace. This will be a little bit slower. We'll be hanging out for a minute. So, we got a couple things going on. Uh, on the docket. <laughs> so we'll be answering some questions. We're going to talk about Inspire 3 rumors. Um, there was recently, this is about a month ago actually, DJI released that they had flown a Mavic 3 at the top of Everest. That was pretty cool. We'll chat about that. Um, about the Inspire 3, there's a lot of things that we can glean from the Ronin 4D um, and we can take a look at what the Ronin 4D has with the X9 camera and see what we might be able to expect with an Inspire 3 that might come at CES, not sure. So um, yeah, let's get started on that repair and uh, you're just kind of gonna learn an experience with me. <laughs> we'll go through it, I've done it once before, always have somebody who knows what they're doing do your repairs on your aircraft. Um, we have a crack in one of the legs and so we're just gonna replace that leg. We got the part here. So forgive me for one sec, I'm just gonna get this top down camera going. Hey, Ian <laughs> says, welcome back. Hi, Ian. <laughs> Thanks for checking in. Um, glad there's somebody out there to say hello. Let's grab that Inspire. We have Manta here. So we were out on a gig and uh, where is that leg? Let's see. Which one's the back? This one. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have to hook up this cam so that you guys can see what's going on. Give me a sec. Cam, there it is, okay. Something like that. Let's go for this. Sweet, hey, okay. <laughs> Here's the very log and non-contrasty looking um, B cam. It's actually a stills camera because I don't have two of these. Uh, so the leg in question, is right about here. Um, it's cracked, so it's loose, so it bends this way. Yeah, that's not good. So we're gonna take this whole piece off and uh, just replace it. Oh, but I don't Let's see what we got. Um, let me know if the audio is too quiet or something. Um, first stream, so still some kinks to iron out, I'm sure. <laughs> what are you drinking? Uh, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> some sort of noon tab. It's an electrolyte thing in some water. There's a lot of running around to get this set up today, but here we are. So I'm just kind of relaxing now. All right. Uh, spare part number 14, Inspire 2 landing gear. Yeah, they are um, leg agnostic. It doesn't matter what corner you're on. They're all the same. So let's see what we got there. Leg. Okay, good. Um, yeah, there's really nothing to this. It's almost like it's two pieces of plastic just like snapped together. Um, and then we got some hardware here. Is that? Oh no. Yes. All right, screws. And these are a little hex head. And probably a Torx. No, they're all just hex. Okay, good stuff. So let's not lose those. And uh, let's take off this leg. There's a lot of, I don't know exactly what it is on the Inspire, but it's a strange um, screw that they use that's not quite, it's like there's like a Torx T8 and a Torx T10 and it's a T9. A T10 won't fit and a T8 will strip it. And it's kind of annoying. I think it's on the, oh yeah, it's on the top of the motors if you're trying to change out like a prop um, or a, yeah, a motor um, to take those off. You have to have like the T9 and it's strange and they're not very common. So it's a little weird. Let's see. 
but who's gonna help with the stream? I'm not drinking on live stream. I'm not drinking on live stream. I will not drink on live stream. <laughs> uh, let's see. I have this size, is that it? Nope, way too big. And let's try this one. Yeah, that's her, okay. So pop that in there. So I'm back because uh, it had been two years. I've moved twice um, in that time. I don't have that original studio space anymore. Uh, I don't have sound dampening and things up here. I haven't taken the time to get this set up. This is my living room. Um, so <laughs> uh, I'm back because I started looking back at the YouTube channel and I started going through some comments and people said, hey, I don't know uh, if you're gonna read this or what. Um, but I'm watching your videos and they're awesome. Thanks for doing them. If you, you know, come on back, it would be cool if you made more videos. And I'm like, okay. And then um, I'm a part of probably as many of you watching this know, I'm um, part of the Inspire2 Facebook group and uh, some folks on there, somebody had said, oh, your videos on dual operating the Inspire2, I will send them to any camera operator that I wanna work with before I do it because I did those videos so that it's kind of like an in-depth um, once over of what to expect when doing two, uh, two controller operation of the Inspire, which is way different. It's like the reason to get an Inspire 2 um, is that dual operator. You just don't have that with a Mavic or anything. Like you could do it with an M300, but that's, that's different. Um, so people said like, you know, I'm, I'm coming to you, to these videos. They're great. <laughs> and uh, it had been a while and I had to repair this leg. So I said, why not do it on a stream? And uh, we'll come back and answer some of the questions that were also looming in those comments that I hadn't been answering for a solid year. So uh, sorry about that. And we're gonna go over that as well today. Um, let's see, how else is this anchored in there? Don't tell me I have to take that motor off. I'm pretty sure this, let's look to this piece for some uh, oh yeah, right, okay, there is an antenna under here. Um, so we gotta pop this piece off and then that will reveal these two screws that we can get at. So let's grab the iFixit kit and do that. How's the drone business? I'm a cinematographer who's gotten way into drone photography. Do you have any advice for professionals adding drones to their business? Hoo <laughs> hoo. Um, okay, audio is good, so, uh, says Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Um, and so Ian says, how's the drone business? Uh, drone business is good. It was a quiet summer, kind of a strange one. My business fluctuates because I'm in a couple different industries, whether it's um, commercial work, advertising, um, literal TV commercials, um, and advertisements that are being produced in my area in Alberta, as well as narrative stuff. So movies, um, TV shows, that type of stuff. So full on union shows or independent shows that might shoot in the mountains or uh, at locations here in town. So my business is kind of like unpredictable and fluctuates depending on what's shooting here. Uh, like Ghostbusters Afterlife was shot entirely in Calgary. Um, Last of Us that's coming out was like a hundred million dollar show also shot entirely in Calgary. And so there's lots going on and that kind of like fluctuates and dictates um, how my stuff is going. So I have a number of regular clients and I'll just get referred for that type of work. Somebody says, do you know a drone pilot in town? And somebody says, yep. Somebody will say, yep, call Arden. Um, and there I am. So it doesn't really matter to me if it's a commercial or narrative or TV show or movie or feature film, whatever. Um, happy to drone it if it needs aerials. So it was a strange summer, it was kind of quiet. Um, took some time out to BC with one of my partners and um, I don't know, just kind of hung out, went to Folk Fest and worked when it came up. This little piece is being annoying. And then October has been very busy. So um, one of the coolers uh, shoots we did recently was for a Japanese TV show doing nature stuff at UNESCO heritage sites. That was pretty sweet. Um, this is a stubborn little piece, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, Ian says, did you have to join the union to do the union shows? E mostly yes. Um, we'll get to that. 
let me get there. Hang on, just figuring this out. Multitasking is not my forte, apparently. Maybe I'll do more live streams. I'll get better at it. This bottom seems to be working well, but can I? Of course, in a regular video, this would all be edited out, and it would just be poop. It's off. But today, we get to stick around for that process. Where are the clips on this? The part looks like what clips? Looks like there's maybe one up, up here. Like. Have. Come on. Okay, we'll go in there. What if we just like push, slide that up? So um, I'm a cinematographer who's gotten way into drone photography. So yeah, I started with photography. Um, I said, hey, let's let's try and take pictures from the air. And this was at the time of like the phantoms and so I swear last time I popped this off this was not that hard or this hard let's go what is the deal here oh progress it's coming off a little bit so yeah I started with photography and said hey let's do this you know do photography from the air um, and with the the Phantom 3, it was just like not the same experience. Is there a clip there? No. This thing is just like a crazy force fit. How does it even, like I don't wanna bust it, but it needs to come off. And I don't remember it being that hard. <clears throat> so the Phantoms were just like not the same as your average camera. And so it was like not good. Um, you would shoot with a, a real camera and then you'd shoot with the Phantom and you could just like tell it was like drone work, which sucked. Um, and so it's great to have like the X5S and the X7, they're a bit of a different ballpark. Oh, that's cool. Let's turn that back on. Try that. Uh, yeah, something like that. Nice and wobbly. Where was I? So, yeah, started out with photography and then got invited out to do a um, to work on a movie that was shooting here in town. And uh, they said, you know, you have the license, so can you come out and shoot this for us? And I said, okay. And I had a little bit of experience. Um, on little films and stuff and said, okay, I'll come out and do it. And the second, it was a couple gigs later that I saw the first Inspire 2. Somebody brought it up from the States and I worked on that. That was cool. I said, we got to get one of those. And so we did. Um, and it kind of just grew from there. I got more involved in the film industry from a drone perspective. Um, and that's been going well. So do you have any advice for professionals adding drones to the business? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> um, the big thing is, yeah, like having the equipment won't get you the business necessarily. And also there's value in saying yes. So can you shoot 4K? Yes. Can you shoot, you know, can you get this shot done? Can you fly here? Do you know how? Do you have the license, the insurance? Yes. Can you provide an SDI feed out? Yes. Those things are valuable. That one was like a $70 piece of equipment to convert HDMI to SDI. And when somebody said, can you, do you have SDI? And I was like, no. And I immediately went and bought the piece that converts the two and uh, being able to say yes to that because folks want you to fit in on set um, was like really valuable and important. So knowing the equipment that you need and having it. So when you show up, you have all your NDs and your lenses and, and your backups and your batteries and you can fly all day and maybe you have a generator along or whatever. So let's see, have you replaced a leg before? Yes, I have. Um, and it was not this hard. I don't know why this one is being stingy. It's just sticking right here. Uh, yeah, like I'm working on, I'm working kind of from the bottom up, but we might have to look this up. So, uh, inspired to leg replacement, super professional, Googling it on the job. Uh, I'm just gonna fix it, okay. Is there like a how? Hmm. 
Placement landing gear leg. Is that too meta? Can I watch a YouTube video while making a YouTube video? Um, I just don't want to break this part. That's the only thing. So. Oh, there's screws on the back. Oh. Duh. Okay. All right. So there's screws back here. Yes. Okay. You don't just pull from the front. That's why it was easier. All right. All right. All right. My bad. Uh, Could have looked this up beforehand. Sorry. Let's see. Probably a sweet view of my hair. Yeah, it is. All right. Screws. Wow. Screws. So much easier. So yeah, basically having the equipment to say yes, um, that's a big one. And then we have two aircraft because DJI aircraft are squirrely and they don't like to do what you want them to do. They'll just shut down. They'll just not boot. They'll just say can't take off because it's cold out or whatever um, for no reason. You know, I don't want to take off. So uh, having a second one, if you can afford that, sometimes will save your tuchus. Um, there we go. Wow. That is, yeah, just a itty bitty screw. Excuse me. And so we have two Inspires, um, and a couple other, like I have a mini three and that thing's great. If I was really in a pinch and I had to shoot something that could only happen once, maybe I could shoot it with the mini three, that type of thing. But pulling out the other Inspire, um, has been a, a lifesaver once or twice. So unfortunately that means you have to pack the car with two Inspires. We have two Inspires, two cameras, four remotes, um, all the lenses for both the X5S and the X7, a bunch of batteries and a whole bunch of other gack. But yeah, um, if you're out there and your camera misbehaves or you like break a lens or your sensor gets pooched or something, um, having to go home for the other aircraft is like not worth it. So having that on site for sure. Uh, let's see. Does it come off now? Is there, are there any other screws? Yes, there are four of them. Okay. Right there. Right. So yeah, take the Inspires, plural, and having them registered and having them insured is more of a pain, but it's all worth it when something happens with your first Inspire and you can just pull out the second one. Um, <laughs> that that one time is like worth it to me to be able to say, yes, it's okay, we had a failure or I crashed. Well, you can't keep flying if you crash because you have to report that to Transport Canada. But like if the aircraft doesn't want to take off or there's some sort of malfunction or somebody breaks it on the ground, ta-da, um, then uh, you can keep flying. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Uh, this was just like unplugged. Does that screw in? Wow, that is dirty. This connector, I think, is just a force fit. Why, why is this so dirty? What the heck? Okay. Um... So the other question, do you have to join the union to do union shows? Most of the time, yes. Um, the way the union works is uh, it's a union show and, and the people that are in the union are protected from non-union folks taking their gigs. And so if you are a second assistant in the union, um, you can work as a second assistant if somebody needs one. <clears throat> Let's go there. Will it do it? There we go. So. Yeah, if you're a second assistant, um, you can be a second assistant on a union show and um, theoretically a union show that is signed an agreement with uh, the International Cinematographers Guild 669, which is what I'm a part of. Uh, they have to hire union seconds for a second camera assistant first before you hire someone that's outside the union. The only way you can hire a non-union person for that gig is if there's no union second camera assistants available for that job. Um, 
And so that basically what it ensures for the production is you're having union camera assistants that have experience because there are vetting requirements to, to get into the union as a second assistant. And um, there are also some sort of like guarantee. So if something happens, if that person's not available, you can call in someone else that is also in the union, has the experience, knows the equipment. Um, so in the off chance that you're working with something that is unique, you can get a permit to work on a union show without being in the union, but you have to prove that there's nobody else in that category that is available um, to take that job. So you have to say, I'm the only drone, drone pilot available in the province right now, and you would have to tell the union that, and they would have to approve your permit to work on this specific show for the specific days that you are there. And they try to make sure that a show isn't having a whole bunch of people that are all just permits um, and not actual union members. So... Um, let's see. So yeah, this connector was just sort of hanging out. I'm not sure why. Can I go back uh, there? Are we still up? Yes, we are. No, that one. So this was just chilling. I'm not sure if the issue is this cable or this antenna. And we might need a new antenna. Um, yeah, I'm gonna open up a second leg to take a look at it and see what's going on. For now, I'm gonna go wash my hands because they are filthy from this antenna for some reason. So I will be back in two seconds. Oh, haha, okay, I'm muted. Sorry, I'm back. Should be better now. Sorry. I forget where I left off. So, yeah, I'm not sure why that uh, that antenna would be loose. Maybe it was just because the leg was cracked, so it wiggled loose. But the Inspire has antennas in all four of these legs, so it doesn't necessarily need all four of them in order to work reliably let's see better great okay good stuff uh, let's see hopefully this other leg sheds some light on things um, I think I was saying while I was muted uh, if we if this one looks a lot better and that part is just pooched then I guess I'll have to put this away and come back another day maybe I'll just have to stream again oh boy <laughs> um, but yeah if uh, if that part is Pooched, then I won't be able to complete the repair today. I'll have to come back another time. Uh, let's see, that looks done. Okay, so let's pop that off. Wow, this is um, this is going to be a lot harder to pop off when it's not already cracked open. How are we doing? Yeah, if you're uh, if you're just checking in, if you're just uh, coming, will you put the loose antenna in the back of the leg? Well, if I can get it to fit. 
Yeah, um, if you're just checking in, hello. Uh, welcome to the stream. Thanks for coming. We're just uh, taking a look at this Inspire 2 leg to see if we can... We're taking a look at a second one because the first one has an antenna that is loose. And we're going to see what the deal is. Maybe I can get another... Um, I'm not sure whether the wire is weird or the piece is weird. I guess either way I'm going to need a new part, but we will find out what's wrong before we put this away because we committed to it. We are already here. Let's see. It's going at the bottom. Hello? Please? Yeah, okay. So, is there a way to check if all antennae are working without replacing them? <laughs> Ooh, um... Nothing simple that I can think of. Uh, wrap it in, wrap three in tin foil, and see what happens. Um, I'm not sure. I think basically, if your landing gear is structurally sound, they should be okay. Uh, but this particular one in question was like cracked, so that's probably why the antenna wiggled itself loose. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I can feel this is loose, but it doesn't want to pop out. No audio. Are we still no audio? Can you hear me okay? I'm not sure how delayed these comments are. Um, because there's a delay on my machine, and then there's a delay on YouTube, and it has to process, then it has to stream to you, and then it has to go to the comment, and then I have to see it. So we're probably actually a, a couple, like a minute or more behind. Hopefully my audio is back. Okay, good. You can't hear me. Sweet. Um, yeah, I mean, those are all out. Why? Why does this have to be this way? Uh, let's go with a little flathead and stick that in there. Yes, that. Okay. So, oh, there we go. Ta da! Pop, pop. Okay. Good stuff. There it is. Okay, so this one is way tighter. Yep. I think equally dusty, but actually attached. So that's a start. Okay. So this one, yeah. So this one is like firmly attached. But the question is is it a pressure fit? Or a screw. I think it's just a pressure fit. If I pull? Yeah. Okay, so it's quite the push. But let's just see if we just like. Uh, okay, so you, I, I really had to push on that to get it to snap into place. But okay, 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 okay. So why don't we um, put this one back? I will come back and screw those screws in. To make sure that's like seated correctly. Yeah, like that. Whew. Did you guys see the dust? <laughs> that must be dust that went like all the way through the motor and then fell down in there. I've flown in some dusty locations. <laughs> This is rather annoying, actually, that it doesn't have any way. It's just like sitting in there, aside from the screws keeping this like cover on. Nope. Doesn't want to go. Okay. So what if we like? There we go. Ah, okay, that's back on. Okay, so I'll come back and screw that on later. But. Let's see if we can just pressure fit this antenna back on. Maybe it just wiggled loose or whatever. Um, how are we? We're good there. Okay. Back to the comments. Okay, good. Let's see. Like this connector looks the same. You just really gotta want it. Wow. Like this end looks okay. And this one looks the same. There's even a little like retaining ring that is present and accounted for. So I'm not sure why, like I don't want to get tools to put this back together. It seems like I should be able to do it with my hands, but it's not working. 
Mm-hmm. Fun. Okay. Well, I might as well take the leg off, I guess. I'm going to need to replace the leg anyway. So, um, <laughs> I guess the, uh, the big brain move would be to take the other antenna and put it on here and see if it's the antenna or the wire. Because if it's the wire, we have bigger issues. Um, but let's just carry on for now. So, other topics. What else do we have going on today? Um, all right. <laughs> Let's see. So uh, we're going to see about mapping the Rolaxes to the second controller. Um, yes, a number of people asked me about that from the uh, first couple dual controller uh, videos I made, saying, like, how do you do that exactly? Um, and so I think I'll be able to boot this up and map the roll axis to the left controller. So when you have a camera operator, it's on the second controller and the Inspire 2, the main controller is um, your sticks to fly and the second controller is one stick pan and tilt and the other stick will be the roll axis of the camera. So you can kind of just like adjust it as you need to. And the downside is if you crank around sometimes, you'll still be like sideways because it's DJI and it sucks. Um, but when you're off, you can like fix it. Or if you're panning, Excuse me, and if you're panning and you notice that it starts to go off, you can fix it live um, with the controllers uh, or with the, the joystick. So uh, let's see. So I should be able to boot this up and go through that. Uh, somebody, so it's funny, like a lot of the, I, the folks that watch this channel are like one of two groups. One is, in, it doesn't matter where you are, but you have an Inspire 2. Um, and so there's like things to learn there. And then the other side is folks in Calgary because I'm also a member of the Calgary drone group and um, I'm happy to answer questions and chat about the equipment on there. So somebody asked uh, where to fly in Calgary uh, with a sub 250 gram, so a micro drone. Um, yeah, Ian, uh, I, see the, I see your thing there. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, so where to fly in Calgary sub 250. So the bylaws in Calgary are kind of weird, but um, what they say is uh, any park except for Prairie Winds, let's just go like this, um, any park except for Prairie Winds Park, uh, Splash Parks, cemeteries, yes, all of them, uh, Nose Hill, Weasel Head, Ralph Klein Park. So like the big ones, the notable ones, the ones that are like fancy, large, unique, or Nose Hill is particularly close to and above the airport. So that's not really safe. Uh, Inglewood Bird Sanctuary, don't fly near the birdies. Um, and there's a couple other ones, uh, wetlands and storm ponds as well. Basically like look out for birds and their habitats and don't fly there. Um, but uh, let's turn this back on. This will just be a game for this whole show. Uh, if there's, you know, small like areas near like a school, if it's a quiet school field, you could go and fly there. That might be a good idea. Um, also you can fly from private property if you have permission. So if you're flying from your backyard, that's okay. Um, but sidewalks and roads are not, um, uh, because you don't have permission from the city to fly there unless you have a permit. And usually they would say, close the road, then you can fly from the road. So, uh, we got this off and this little antenna wire is going to be a nightmare. Um, that'll be in the leg and that might be a little bit beyond my experience so i don't know that we'll get to that but uh yeah so community play parks and play fields if you're trying to fly to sub 250 gram a micro drone in calgary um policeman's flats out southeast of town is an okay one too just be respectful there's like people fishing down there people go for walks to like walk their dog and there are landowners down there there are people that have their house in that same valley so be respectful stay where you can see it and out over the river is usually okay um, especially if there's nobody on the river like fishing or anything. So um, working for businesses is okay. Just take off and land on their property. Just like go on their parking lot or their lawn or their back lot or whatever within their fence and you can fly a, a sub 250 um, to work for that. And the drones are good enough. Like the Mini 3 is good enough. You can definitely do professional work with it. So yeah, this is um, this is not plugging in. So let's switch this around and just pop this other leg off. For a sec and just see if it's the antenna or the connector this drone might be out of business for a minute we will have to find out what did i do before we had a screwdriver um so ian said take a look at um 
Professionals adding drones to businesses. Um, did you have to join Union? Yeah, Ian, I'm not sure what you were asking exactly. Uh, look back in the chat to a longer query, yeah. If you just want to like reiterate something that I haven't covered if I'm missing it, and uh, we'll talk about it. Let's pop this off, there we go. Okay, so that's off. So here's this connector. Hoop, ah, there we go. Okay, so there's the good one. This connector looks significantly cleaner than the other, and that was a cinch. That like that just snapped and it was on, but it didn't stay on. Like it connects, and then it just like falls off. So it's like a really loose like. <laughs> if I could just pull this apart with two fingers, I wouldn't trust that connection to fly on it. So I'll put this one back and. Um, that's cool, that means that this, like the connector might be okay. It's just the uh, the connector yeah, on the other leg is okay. It's just this piece, so I'll just have to grab a new antenna before I can put it back together. But at least now we know. So, greetings from Montana. Do you think an Inspire 3 is around the corner? Ho ho ho, we will get there, Agri Studios. Um, we will get there, that's coming up. So, uh, that one is in, good stuff. Am I still, yeah, okay, great. I think we can do, let's try this out. Let you guys watch that full screen. Wow, okay. Pop that back in, ta-da. Good, puff of dust and we're back. <clears throat> so this one, let's put the, so I, I feel that this connector is okay. Um, and I wouldn't actually know the first thing about replacing it, so. Oh my goodness, I should have tried that other antenna on it. <laughs> okay, so just to to keep from my um, to keep away from my in in incompetence, we're gonna talk about something more interesting. Uh, Inspire three, so it's it's difficult to talk about the Inspire three without first talking about the Inspire two. Um, because this is what we know, this is what's available at, like right now, and I've talked a lot about what's cool and what isn't. There's a ton of room for improvement with uh, the Inspire 2. <clears throat> There's lots that can be changed and, and upgraded. So um, back, I made a video called Everything Wrong with the Inspire 2, and so um, I'm just gonna kinda go through those points. Batteries, they shaped up to be okay. I didn't like them initially, um, but they've become one of the most popular batteries in kind of cinema. Um, Ignite Digi in Australia has taken to <clears throat> using TB50 batteries uh, on different, uh, like on Alexa minis and the Ronin 2 also takes TB50s and the Ronin 40 also takes TB50s. So there is a future for the TB50. I don't think that's gonna go away and I would be surprised if DJI stopped manufacturing them. Um, once you get past the like first step of like ingesting them and testing them out and flying them then they're good um they're they're pretty solid batteries and they don't decay too bad i got a new pair recently and who does that thing fly forever like did those batteries fly forever but the older ones still fly just fine they eventually maybe like error out and whatever but so this is this is like plugged but i wouldn't trust it so um this aircraft might have to go in and have this wire replaced because i don't know where that wire goes to try and do it myself. Like that plugs, maybe that's, that's okay. I think it's just the antenna. So, uh, Inspire 2. So the FPV camera always is, always has been garbage. Um, this little camera up there, yeah, it's trash. Uh, hopefully if they include an FPV camera on the Inspire 3, it's more than like 480i or whatever that thing is. That's room for improvement. Um, let's put this back in the other leg. The Horizon Drift uh, is like better with software updates, but not completely fixed. Um, I'm realizing I just, uh, I need my glasses. I'm just, give me one second. So Horizon Drift and Yaw Drift, they're both present, um, but they've been improved somewhat with software. Hopefully they'll eliminate that in the Inspire 3. Metadata is still garbage. It still thinks it's like 1969 or something sometimes. 
<clears throat> um, you'll bring in a file and it will not be the date, which is surprising because I've always said the Inspire knows what time and day it is. Uh, are we still live on that camera as we are? Okay. Um, I wonder if I just like, cool, let's try that. The Inspire knows what time and day it is because GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite Systems, GPS, um, Galileo, Baidu, um, <clears throat> Russian, Chinese, and American systems, they, uh, they operate, they figure out your location, they need four things. They need X, Y, Z position and time because where you are changes the time. When you're flying through space, it's actually a different time than on the Earth. So you need to know exactly what time it is where the satellite is and what time it is where the drone is in order to calculate how long it took for a signal to go from A to B and then you can try and get like, that position. So the GPS chip in the Inspire 2 and in every aircraft knows exactly what time it is to the millisecond. Um, there are microphone um, like jamming so you can have multiple mics on a movie set where you wear like a you know a, a pack in your in your back or like strapped to your leg or whatever um, that instead of setting the time in, uh, internally and holding on to that time they will set the time to the satellite because G GPS satellites know what time it is and it's that good so the Inspire has technology in it that knows what time it is to the millisecond and still you can get stuff that's like yesterday or tomorrow or the wrong time zone or like the wrong year completely which is insane and unacceptable. I'm sure the smaller aircraft are fine um, because it's like simpler systems. But for some reason, when you start recording like ProRes and RAW, it just forgets that it's 2022. It just doesn't even know anymore because who needs to know, right? Um, so that's surprising. Let's go back to, uh, let's see, record mode still like to bounce around. Like you'll restart the aircraft and it'll be in DNG RAW, which is dumb and not acceptable. <laughs> um, Crystal Sky, they're pretty good. Um, they've held up really well. I'm very happy with them. I don't know if I'm ready to say goodbye to them. I do like them. I like working with them. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I want to go to like an all integrated, like handheld control situation on the Inspire 3. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I like that it's like a separate monitor that has its own battery and everything. Um, if they just improve the software, like the Crystal Sky is good. I'm happy with it. Uh, not sure if they'll continue using micro SDs, but probably it just seems like everything these days, like GoPros and all the drones just use micro SDs. So that's the way it's not great that you need a micro SD in there to shoot on the Cine SSD. I guess it's for backup, but you shouldn't need it. If you forget your micro SD and you're on a gig, you're hooped. You cannot even shoot, even if you have a Cine SSD in the aircraft, which is dumb. Um, Simplify the camera operator's experience. I've said this before with fewer warnings. So the camera operator can't control a lot of things about the flight of the aircraft, but they still get a warning if you have like a low battery, but that's not the camera operator's job. They're just operating the camera and like their controller will start freaking out if it's low battery and there's literally nothing they can do about it. That's all the pilot's job. So like take that stuff away. Um, there's no hours log in the aircraft. Hopefully an Inspire 3 will have that. You can tell how long it's been flying. Maybe it'll be dusty and need a new landing leg. And no maintenance manual still. There's no like public information on how to do this or like how to maintain the motors. Every My entire maintenance manual is something I developed myself based on knowledge and experience with the aircraft. Um, the DJI lenses are good, which is kind of evidence because one, DJI bought Hasselblad and they bought all the patents that come with it. And two, um, they've continued to use the DL mount lenses on the X9, on the Ronin 4D. And so we'll talk about that and how um, that will move into Inspire 3. Maybe the X9 can give us some clues. Maybe the X9 will just port to the Inspire 3. Um, maybe not. So the DL lenses were built with like knowledge from Hasselblad's patents, which helps out. Um, so Inspire 3, I've heard grumblings that it might be uh, released at CES, which is in Vegas in January. Maybe it would be about time. Everybody thought it might even be this year. Evidently not, I'm guessing not. Um, I'm ready if it does get released, but uh, I'm not holding my breath. So uh, here's our good landing gear. Here's our toast one. Um, they gave me new screws for that. So maybe I'll just use the new screws, I guess. And we'll feed that through there. Okay, so <clears throat> let's just talk about first about the Ronin 40 when it comes to Inspire 3. Um, the Ronin 4D comes in two flavors. One is 6K and one is 8K. Uh, the 8K is $4,400 USB USD more money, 4,400 US, uh, which is a lot. Um, but it includes a $750 uh, Pro SSD, 
it's like the Sydney SSDs, just it has like a USB-C port on it. So you just like plug it into the computer, which is cool because you don't need a reader. But um, <laughs> are you going to be in Vegas? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> it's very expensive for things that I can just learn online probably. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm jumping around. So the Ronin 4D comes in two flavors, 6K and 8K. Uh, depending which aircraft you have, uh, it has they both have dual native ISO, which is really cool. Um, native ISO gives you the least noise and it's like a baseline sensitivity for the sensor that gives you the best image And then you just have to like ND or expose to that sensitivity, which is cool Anyway, dual native ISO either 800 or like 4,000 or 5,000 a high native ISO allows you to shoot like evening stuff with really high sensitivity and not have bad image noise Which is cool still a rolling shutter, which is sad. Um, they can't do like a global shutter So when you like pan around quickly things go like jello as opposed to like a proper cinema camera That is a it's taking the whole image at once as opposed to like scanning the sensor uh, Built-in NDs, which is really really cool. Um, the I wonder if I can pull this up. Let's try this. This might crash. This might not work. Uh, DJI X9, and we'll go here, um, and we'll go. Sorry, hang tight. One sec. DJI X9. Why is it not like the first? Um, why is it not the first result? So the Ronin 4D and the X9 has built in um, NDs, which is really cool. It has NDs all the way up to like ND 2.1 or something, which is a lot. And it's all inside the X9, which is really sweet. Where is this footage? Uh, let's go like that. There it is. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, so you can see like the ways it puts the NDs in. DJ built in nine style. There we go. Okay. So it can like slide the filters in the way, which is really awesome to have built in ND filters. It's really nice. You don't need to be like landing the drone and screwing them on front, assuming you're going to be using a drone eventually. Um, that's really cool that it has built in NDs. It has, um, it takes the DL lenses, but it also takes different mounts. Um, you can just remove the whole mount and replace it with like a Sony or a Canon mount or some other, maybe even like a little uh, PL. Oh, it says Leica M, yeah, etc. So <clears throat> that's really cool. Um, let's go back here. That, and we'll just double check. We're still good. Yeah. Okay. Um, where was I? The, um, yeah, so the built-in NDs, that's really cool. <laughs> the Ronin 4D will shoot 422HQ, but not 4444XQ, which the Inspire will, which is kind of strange. I do sometimes appreciate the quality of a ProRes 4444XQ. I don't know why they wouldn't include that. So maybe the X9 or the Inspire 3 will still do a 4444 flavor of ProRes. I'm not sure. Um, but that was one thing that was like notably missing from the X9 on the Ronin 40. Without sacrifices, these cameras can do 4K 60, uh, 6K 48, and 8K 30 in ProRes, and up a little higher in ProRes RAW, which is like nuts doing like 4K 60. I don't need that, but if you do, it's got it, which is really cool. Overall, it looks like less limited than the X7, aside from lacking the 4444XQ. Um, the X9 looks like a more like expansive, and it's not as like like particular about what types of formats and stuff you can shoot. Um, and another cool thing, the tilt axis is adjustable. So on the gimbal, I don't have a gimbal. Um, basically you can slide the tilt axis of the gimbal because you can put different lenses on there. So if you put a big lens on it, you can slide it back to balance it, which is really cool. Um, and so the X9 has that adjustable tilt axis for different lenses that aren't just DJI DL. So the set of lenses that you can put on it is actually like massive. Uh, it's like this, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, where is it? Yeah. So there's like DJI DL here, but there's like Laowa and all sorts of like Leica lenses that you can put on the X9, which is really rad because flying like proper cinema glass and anamorphic is dope. Um, that would be really cool. So, uh, we'll go there. Yeah. So Inspire 3, the thing would have to be pretty beefy to carry an X9. The X9 is like big. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to solve that. Maybe it'll be like an X7S, which would be frankly disappointing. 
if it has better like thrust to weight ratio, if it has a higher payload capacity and better flight time, then yeah, I guess you could put an X9, like a proper X9 on the Inspire 3. It'd be beefy. The thing would have to be larger and higher off the ground, but it would be awesome. So I'm really hoping that like the X9 either as is gets ported to the Inspire 3 or is improved or something, or there's some like maybe a, a lighter weight version or some version that has just like some smaller tweaks. I'm not sure, but if they stick with like an X7S, that'll be a bit of a bummer because you there's a gap between this and flying like a proper cinema camera, like a Red or a, an Alexa or something, um, or like a Venice on like a Free Fly Alta X or some like heavy lift. There's a gap. There's a big gap between an Inspire and flying like a Mini, um, an Airy Mini, and so you're trying to bridge that gap by getting global shutter and getting built-in NDs and getting proper cinema lenses and all of those things are holding the Inspire back from fully replacing like an Alta X system. Um, and so where you can eliminate that, you can put a global shutter in, you can put different lenses on, um, you can shoot 8K, you'll start to bridge that gap. And we, people say, can you shoot anamorphic on that Inspire? Like, yeah, you can. So now you don't have to pay a $10,000 day rate to bring in three people and fly an Alta X with a Ronin 2 or a Movi um, Pro to fly like a big camera with the same cinema glass. You can get that job done smaller, cheaper, faster, and there isn't as much like insurance and rigmarole and and um, and like certification required as flying those large aircraft. So I'm looking for DJI to take the Inspire 3 and really bridge that gap between the Inspire 2 and like an like a heavy lift system that's flying proper cinema cameras and cinema glass. I'm just gonna check in with the YouTube comments here. One second, um, are we still good? Oh, did this, uh... no, that didn't turn off, okay. Oh, dang, did you guys not see my screen? Maybe not. Did that not go? Oh, no, okay, uh, MacBook display. Display capture, why can't I do properties? Um, I'll go back here, add a display capture. <laughs> uh, let's see, MacBook, and we'll grab that, okay. So. Sorry guys, I'm just gonna fix this and I'll actually show you what I was talking about. Mm, yeah, something like that. So if I go here, you can see what I see and we'll go back to this. So these are the lenses for the, um, for the X9. There's a whole wide gamut of them. Sorry, it's hard to preview everything that's going on. There's a whole gamut of the X uh, lenses for the X9. You have the DL lenses in the front and then all these different like Leica glass in the back. Um, having options in cinema glass and anamorphics is really nice. And then here is here are the NDs on, uh, on the X9, which is really cool. They'll just slide in. Um, you can just do that digitally and not have to like land the aircraft to change your ND, which is super nice. So go back to here there we go okay I don't know if you guys want to let me know if you hear like a mumbling I just have I got folks in the other unit here and they're they've got a TV on so if you hear that I'll just get them to turn it down yeah, I'm gonna get them to turn it down, one sec. So I'm gonna put this leg back together, put those screws back on. So where are we at? Inspire 3. So uh, <laughs> I don't know how DJI found me. Maybe it was from these videos or something, but last year, or it was, I think it was early 2022, 
they sent me an email and said, hey, can we do like a Zoom call? And I was like, okay, this is DJI in California. I think it was like marketing or research or product development. They were like, can we do a Zoom call with you? And I was like, uh, I guess so. So we set it up and I talked to one of the folks from DJI in LA and they said like, what do you want to see? I didn't ask like why me, but maybe it's from these videos. Um, they said, what do you want to see from future DJI products? And I said, look, like the software is where, like the hardware is fine. Like the image sensor is good. The, like the footage is good. The flight time is fine. Like the aircraft fly fine. Um, it's more about um, like the software behind it, like having things crash, having things like shut down. Software doesn't want to like, like aircraft doesn't want to take off. <laughs> all like that kind of stuff. Um, I'm like, the software is where it's at. And they're like, what about like smaller aircraft? And I'm like, stop putting obstacle avoidance in there because most of the time I'll just go to shoot something and I'll fly and obstacle avoidance will just like stop the aircraft. So when it comes to the Inspire 3, I really don't care for obstacle avoidance, whether it's gonna stop when I fly up to like a tree or something, because more than often, more than uh, more often than not, it's just wrong. I'll go to fly by something and it'll just halt, um, which is problematic for me. So I turn it off, I don't need it, it's dead weight. And I hope that they don't really focus on like, oh, it has 360 obstacle sensing and avoidance. I don't need that. I'll watch the aircraft, keep my eyes on it and not fly it into anything. I just want the aircraft to fly where I want it to. Um, I don't need the weight and the time on their engineering time spent on like making sure I don't crash because that's my responsibility to fly the aircraft. So with the Inspire 3, I don't really care about obstacle avoidance personally. Um, might be cool if it's light or it's easy or if it works well, but we'll see. Um, it, they might use RC plus, uh, as I mentioned, I'm kind of like on the fence about all in one controllers. Um, I do like having like an external controller, but the other funky thing is they might use DJI transmission, which has the receiver built into a monitor, which is cool, but not, I wish there were just receivers that you could strap to like a bigger screen or something. Um, but it is a very, very good image transmission system that will go very far with high quality. And it also has two way control, like on a Ronin two you have like a joystick that you can control the, um, you can control the camera and you can even use the thing it has like motion sensing. So you can do this with it and you can control the camera. So if you could do that on a drone, that's pretty sweet. And if it has DJI transmission and it enables the like two way control, the camera operator could just like do this or do this to pan um, the camera naturally smoothly, which would be pretty sweet. I'm still interested to see if they do another styrofoam box or what this thing comes in a big styrofoam box it's like a black foam but the stuff is rigid it is bomber it is the best styrofoam i have ever seen in my life i've had this styrofoam case for almost six years and um just turn that back on hang on i think that shut off we'll just go here so uh it is the best styrofoam i've had in my life it's like the most resilient foam and the thing's a little bit scuffed up but it's smaller lighter and more efficiently designed than any hard case with foam i did a review of like a giant and nook case that can fit an inspire 2 and it's just heavy and it's extra extra large super tall it's a pain to move it's got wheels on it and these foam ones are just super light they're kind of slim so you can stack them you can put them side by side put them vertical it's super easy the the nook like the large heavy cases from like gpc and nook are just so massive they're impossible to maneuver very very heavy very expensive and the inspire came with a foam case and i'm really hoping maybe they just keep that the same or just improve it just a little bit that's totally fine don't mess with perfection dji uh finally 4d has maybe not finally finally the 4d has time code so maybe you can jam sync um yeah i think you could maybe like maybe you'll be able to jam sync on the inspire which is shooting multiple cameras and knowing what time it is. So when you go back and put all these cameras into one timeline, they will edit up cleanly. So they'll, they'll sync up. So if there's an explosion, the explosion happens at the same time in each clip because all the cameras knew exactly what time it was. That's what I was talking about, like time code and the GPS earlier. Um, if it had the ability to jam sync, that'd be sweet. Um, I don't know if the Inspire 3 will, but that could be sweet. If you could just jam it and then it would just stay on or relative to the uh, GPS time, which it could just get every time it booted, that would be nice. Um, at least if it just had like a running, like what time it thinks it is, at least you could get close and then the editor could adjust it. But right now there's no time code information on the ProRes files. Um, 
<laughs> I am like pr as pricing wise, I'm prepared to drop like 10 to 15 K on this Canadian, the Inspire three, if, and when it comes out, uh, I'll need a camera, might need a second aircraft. It's going to be expensive, but hopefully it's awesome. Um, better footage, better quality, better flight times, better transmission, just more features, better compatibility, better reliability, and easier to use software. Um, sounds like a good bet. And these aircraft are getting a little uh, a little older, so I'd like to see like some image improvements and some usability improvements and having things that don't just like shut down when it's minus 30. We need to fly in minus 30 sometimes. Um, and that's practically the same Fahrenheit or Celsius. <laughs> cold is cold. Um, but you still need to fly the aircraft and the Inspire 2 can fly in that even though it's only rated to minus 20. Um, definitely stay within the manufacturer requirements of your aircraft when it comes to Transport Canada and probably the FAA as well. Um, I can see maybe more complicated controllers um, for it if they put in some kind of camera control like rejigging the the standard controller <clears throat> that comes with it to have more features or different buttons moving away from that like basic style they've had since like uh, Phantom 3 and Phantom 2 even. Having a more complicated controller would be neat. That would be nice if you're going to improve on that. But again, it remains to be seen whether they're going to keep a Crystal Sky type or if they'll move to like a built-in like the Mini 3, which I don't mind, but it's hard to get that bright, low latency, good software built into the controller. And the problem is there's no external battery for those. I would really like, I think the RC Pro has a uh, has an external battery which you can change which is nice because it's really 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 difficult to charge your controller while using it it's near impossible and the only the next best thing is to have two controllers switch them out and repair to the aircraft if your controller dies but if you're flying all day i just don't want my controller to die i just wanted to have interchangeable batteries so uh that's kind of it hoping for the inspire 3 january maybe at ces they'll announce it and then who knows if it'll be available immediately or if it'll be like a delay like weeks or months before you can actually get it in hand um, but if that comes out you can bet i'll probably be picking one or two up and uh, hopefully have the time to make a video on it so um there was a recent video that i saw that was map uh that was the inspire or sorry, not the Inspire, the Mavic 3. DJI took a Mavic 3 Cine, presumably, to Everest, which was insane. Really cool, very nice footage. A lot of kind of like similar, just like parallax shots, but Everest is beautiful, it can be. And I don't know how long they were there. I worked on a show uh, that I cannot talk about um, and learned a lot about Everest. Um, and that was really cool. So knowing what I know from that, seeing the Mavic 3 at the top of Everest was crazy. The most standout thing about that footage, I'll drop a link in the description when this is done. Um, if you just Google it, like Mavic, DJI Mavic Everest, you'll find that footage, it's about a two minute video. And about three quarters of the way through or two thirds of the way through, they, sh they finally go to flying the Mavic on Maver uh, Everest. And he pulls, he's got an oxygen mask on and he pulls out the Mavic and he, he hits the throttle and he hand launches it and away it goes. And Everest is 8,800 meters in the air. The air is about one quarter as thick as it is at sea level. And that is insane, like we have, um, like a standard Inspire prop and then also like a high altitude one, which th here's the, the standard prop. It's, you know, it's a prop, but the high altitude is like, it's beefier, it's, it's broader and has a bigger swoop on it. And um, it just pushes more air with every rotation, but these are only rated to 5,000 meters. Uh, to, these are to 2,500, these are 5,000. So you'd have to go one step further and that would be 7,500 meters. So the props that are on that Mavic 3, they said it was modified, must be insane. Um, just deep, like heavy swoop, heavily modified and ready to fly. Uh, let's see. <laughs> How many X9 lenses would you get? Um, sorry, I'll finish with the, the, the Mavic first. <clears throat> so that was really impressive to see it fly. And <laughs> um, I have a colleague who wants to get a Mavic three but the thing is the standard controller that's included is, is still like a phone clamp so you clamp your phone onto it and you have to plug it in which is horrible because if you get a phone call it's going to show up or you have to put yourself in airplane mode just to fly which is the way that you would do it but having to clamp your phone is just so annoying and the included controller has that phone clamp and it's like another thousand dollars or three thousand dollars to get like prores and the upgraded controller which is a super pain the mini three has a nice one with a screen built in and that is nice but so much better because i don't have to pull my phone out but um, this guy on Everest, I joked to my colleague Mitch, I said, this guy on Everest can fly with the phone clamp. So can you. <laughs> but um, 
it is it was impressive that he's at the top of Everest and has his phone clamped into the Mavic controller and flew a whole bunch of footage from the top. And finally, the most nutso thing that I do not understand about this footage from the top of Everest is that when the drone shows them at the top of Everest, there's nobody there. It's just the two of them. It, most of everything I know about Everest is like on a, you only have a couple good days a year to climb it. And during those days, anybody that's attempting a climb will do it. And they can do it from two different sides, two different countries. You can climb Everest um, and they will make it to the summit and hey, I'm on the summit. And then they will head back down and it's you can have anywhere between like six and like a hundred people at the summit on any given good midday um because then you know once the sun starts sun starts setting it your toes you need to get off the mountain super fast but in this video they are alone there's two of them that are on the top of everest by themselves and i have no idea if dji paid everybody off if they just took a big risk and got up there on a special day I can't see it any other way. They paid everybody off or they went on a day when they when it wouldn't be otherwise good. But you can't go up when there's crazy winds. So people go up when the wind is calm and that's what you would need for a drone. So they had to be up there on a medium calm wind day. Why isn't there anybody else on the summit? How did you do that DJI? I don't know, I don't understand. So that's crazy. Um, oh, we're black. Oh no, uh, why are, oh no, what happened? Hey, sorry, wow, uh, let's go A, where should be that? Oh, this is what's up, sorry guys, wow. <laughs> First stream, uh, I need. it's hard to keep an eye on the comments <clears throat> and everything basically, talking, reading, notes, repairing, um, showing off, so. Yeah, the Mavic 3 on Everest was impressive and I have no idea how DJI did that, um, I was impressed. Let's see, uh, how many of the X9 lenses would you get? So I think it's one. One out of four X7 lenses have full frame coverage. There, is, there are two, is the X9 full frame? Uh, I think it's still Super 35, but there's a full frame camera called the DJI P1. It has a full frame sensor, which is massive. Um, and one of the X7 lenses has full same full frame coverage. So even if the X9 is full frame, you could use that same lens and all of them are compatible. It shows three on the website. So I wonder if it's those three um, that have the proper coverage for the X9 for shooting on the Ronin 4D. Um, the nice thing is, I guess in that case, if they're the same lenses, I'll be able to hold on to most or all of my lenses. Maybe they'll release one or two more. Maybe they'll be faster. They'll just be like a newer version with better optics or um, or some type of like other autofocus or something. But generally I expect the DL lenses to be compatible with the X9, which is cool. So I'll save myself buying a lens set. Um, but there are lenses called the DJI, uh, DJI, they're the Lawa Nanomorph series. Um, I know we really love when I go back and forth to like different systems, but I'm gonna go back to my screen here. Uh, let's try that. Uh, let's see, Lawa Nanomorph. And this one, are we live here? Yeah, we are, okay, good. So, world's smallest nanomorphic lens. So Lawa went and did an Indiegogo campaign for these um, because the campaign ended, you can't really see like all the stuff, let's see. So they are, yeah, come on. It like doesn't even let you view it. Oh, continue reading. There we go. Yeah, so there's three of them. Uh, 27, 35, and 50 mil, they are anamorphic lenses that come in a DJI DL mount, possibly. Uh, let's go back to there. Yeah, they come in a DL mount, which so you can put them on the X9, which means shooting, shooting anamorphic, and these things are less expensive. They're like 2,800 US for the set, so about 1,000 Canadian each, which is not bad. That's about the same as the DL lenses. They were 1,500 a piece um, US, I think. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. So these are about the same and they are nice glass. They have focus uh, rings on them so you can use them. You can change out the mount, I believe. Um, and you could, on the Ronin 4D, there's a little motor that may or may not come to the Inspire 3, but there's a motor that can autofocus them. So you have like a LiDAR focus system and you can like pull focus to somebody's face and the machine, the, the, the camera will do it for you by motoring this lens gear. So these things are really sweet. Um, these Lawa Nanomorph, they're very affordable, one and a half times anamorphic, so they're one and a half times wider than they should be, or more compressed than they should be, and you stretch them back out in post, and it gives you that nice, like, anamorphic look, and they make ones with, like, an orange and a blue flare, and also, like, silver, which is, like, a neutral flare. It's just, like, really 
just a nice look and super awesome that Lawa came out with um, with some anamorphic lenses. So that that gives us like possible anamorphic options for the X9, which is something else that I get asked for um, on the X7. They're like, oh, can you shoot anamorphic on the Inspire? And uh, right now, no. The best I could get is like some stupid anamorphic adapter or something, but putting real anamorphic glass on the X9 would be awesome. You would just need that uh, tilt adjustment for the weight of the lens. So uh, let's go back and double check. Um, okay, do you think the Inspire 3 will come out this year or next one? Yeah, I would say next year, definitely. Mm. Let's see what else do we have going on? I don't know if you guys have more questions about Inspire 3 or like other specific things that I haven't covered, thoughts, questions, definitely open to that. There's a lot. It's just a big question about whether or not they'll port the X9, if they'll keep it the same, if they'll make a different version of the X9, maybe they'll release an X7S. Um, the camera is the big question mark and that will dictate like what camera specs you can have. And then otherwise it'll just be like medium improvements to the software and the hardware and and can it fly longer and all that stuff. There've been a few crashed ones. Um, there is a Facebook group, uh, I think soon to be your future hopeful Inspire 3 uh, owners group. So be sure to join that on Facebook if you're interested, if you're thinking about one, if you wanna know, um, hopefully we'll pick one up when it comes out and do like explore it and learn all about it. Let's see, how come you couldn't finish repairing the leg? Oh. <laughs> the um, There's an antenna in each one of the legs and um, this one is, not I think the connector is pooched for some reason so I need to go get another antenna to put that back together you can buy these pieces um, and I'm hoping it's just the antenna and not the little SMA connector that's on there um, the aircraft will fly with three it's just not as good um, I would like to have all four receivers all four legs running so uh, let's see yeah, again, anything else you want to know about the Inspire 3, drop it in while I'm here. I think I'm... Oh, yeah, we still have other questions from um, from videos, do we? Uh, let me double check that. Sorry, one sec. Ba -ba -da -ba -dum. Yeah, no, I guess I just had... Um, I had it queued up to kind of like show the questions um, on in the comments, but I sort of just answered them. There's a whole lot of... <laughs> Things you can do with live streaming and and cut and show different bits and pieces like uh, if I had a question I could do like how big is the drone you could say ta-da how big is the drone it's a three foot wingspan when you take the aircraft and you put one of these on each corner from tip to tip you know three feet um, but this I kind of queued up for questions and I sort of just answered them without using it for a stream like I said thanks for being patient so um, if there aren't any more questions here, I think we'll wrap this up in just a moment. Um, but thanks for sticking around so far. I appreciate you guys coming out. I definitely should have uh, posted to the Inspire2 group to say that I was live right now. Um, but I'll post this video. It'll be available to watch later for replay for all you guys. And uh, I'll finish repairing this leg. I do have a couple ideas for another video upcoming. Um, if I work out some sort of actual studio setup here, then I'll put that together and get it going. Um, yeah, let's do this. We'll go, um, mm -hmm. yeah, other questions, you can find me on Twitter. Um, my Twitter handle is down there, it's Yelbus, my last name, backwards. If you tweet there, usually I can respond with answers to questions. Um, also, just comment on YouTube down below here. Drop in the comments. I'll try and answer those on Facebook, the Inspire2, Inspire2 Facebook group. I'll answer all the questions that I can. But otherwise, generally, thanks for coming. My name is Arden Shipley for Yellow House Aerial. 